Hey, hello, welcome to Backstage with Gig Performer. My name is Brett Pontecorvo. We're here every Thursday talking about Gig Performer tips, tricks, and workflows from artists who are using Gig Performer to own the stage. If you're watching right now, um, you popped in. Thank you so much for being here. Um, let us know in the comments, are you using Gig Performer to mix hardware instruments and VSTs? Or are you just using VSTs? Or, I haven't heard of this one before, but I'm sure it's done. Are you just using Gig Performer to control all of your hardware preset changes? Um, very curious. Today we actually have a special guest who I believe is doing a mix of all of them. Um, Samuel N. Williams. I missed the N in the uh, thumbnail there. That's okay. We can put it back later. But um, fantastic dude. Uh, playing a lot of really interesting music, gospel, uh, R&B, and has, from what I can understand, we're going to hear more about this today, um, he's kind of tried everything. It looks like he's been on Ableton, he's been on main stage, I don't know, what, he's been on hardware, it's, it's everywhere, um, but he is he's landed on uh, Gig Performer um, and is doing a lot of cool things. I know you guys can't see him yet, but um, his studio is probably cooler than yours. Um, which I'm, I'm pretty excited to have you guys check all of this out. Uh, we got some people commenting in. Manfred, gig performer newbies with VSTs only. I love it. Actually, my setup is VSTs only, um, and it works really well. Um, for my use case, I don't really have a reason to run hardware. Dave Bolden, future backstage guest, friends. Get ready for this guy's episode because it's going to be another level. Really cool stuff going on. And if you haven't checked out his band, Meryl Bone Jelly, Hope I'm pronouncing that right. Make sure you do. Um, so I'm running a Phantom 07 alongside VSTs. The Phantom is also the sound card. Yeah, that's a really cool uh, way to handle things because you've kind of got the best of the VST world and then you have Phantom running as a sound card. Um, really cool, Dave. Uh, and we'll get to hear more about his stuff um, in detail. Let's see. Did anybody else write in here? Ray, using Gig Performer with a Casio XWP1. Awesome. Really cool stuff. Yeah. If you uh, are unfamiliar, uh, we've got a whole foundation series that talks about this, but Gig Performer um, isn't just helpful for running VSTs. It can be used for um, audio instruments if you're playing guitar or honestly anything that you can put into a microphone if you're singing. And it also handles program change, sending and receiving really well. Um, so if you happen to be using hardware and you have some patches you like to use that you're a bit attached to, Gig Performer will send those messages out, which, by the way, scales really well. So if you're using three keyboards or, you know, two keyboards and one MIDI keyboard, everything can stay in sync um, using Gig Performer, which is a really nice way to just have all your devices play together. Um, so, yeah, that's uh, that's my spiel on program changes. Uh, if you're late coming in, do let us know if you're using Gig Performer mixing hardware and VSTs um, or not. Um, but today oh we actually have one more one more announcement coming up very soon we have a special guest Jens Squirblies um, which we had to do some research so Jens amazing keyboard player um, has actually had a fantastic career playing all sorts of things um, founded a music school uh, which is pretty cool um, is currently touring is more well known in Germany but if you haven't checked him out he's got some cool stuff going on with um, all sorts of different instrument companies and is an amazing player really fantastic and, and also uh, just the most kind down-to-earth guy um, so he's gonna be coming up next week so if you are able to clear your schedule <laughs> this is one of those episodes where um, we're going to talk about Gig Performer. We're going to talk about how he's using it. Um, but this guy is the real deal. He is got music knowledge from performing for decades um, and just has like deep wisdom ingrained in him. So if you want to catch some of that, make sure you're around next Thursday, 1130 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. But today, uh, I'm actually really excited. We've got special guest Samuel N. Williams coming on. So... Welcome to Backstage, Sam. Hey, Brett. Thanks for having me. Yeah, man. Dude, it's so good to have you here. So, okay, for those of you, those of us who are watching right now who don't know who you are, what you're doing, uh, can you give us the lowdown? Like, who is Samuel N. Williams? How did we end up on this show together? Hi, well, uh, hi everyone. My name is Samuel N. Williams. I live in the 
U.S. Virgin Islands, St. Thomas yes. to be exact. Um, I actually, how did me and Brett meet? <laughs> I know we were connected by Nemanja, who, if you haven't bumped into Nemanja, then you're not around. Um, But yeah, he connected us. And I guess he found maybe your Facebook page. Is that where you guys first got connected? It was my Instagram. I I had just finished playing for a festival, a reggae festival. Mm -hmm. And I I posted up my, you know, my setup of my picture of Big Perform. I was like, I love this software. And I was just like, um, forget main stage. Um, for this now, yes, yes, and, <laughs> yes. And then I guess he saw the hashtag or something, and then he um he connected us. Yeah, yeah, really awesome. So I'm like, we're going, we're going uh, deep really quickly. But um, so you use Mainstage. Did you also use Ableton for a time? I tried to use Ableton. Um, did some research on it, and I was just like, not not for what I want to do. I gotcha. do use Ableton um, when I'm running some live tracks and yep. stuff like that for shows, but not yeah. for what I wanted to do with my keyboards. I I didn't yeah. like running Ableton. Yet. So, okay. Tell me this. So what was the problem with your previous setups? Like, and I don't mean like where were there technological failures? I mean, when you were looking for a software, what did you want to be able to do that made Gig Performer um like the most attractive to you <laughs> so i'm i'm gonna i want to start with mainstage because that's i used that for a while and that it did what i wanted to do for what when i started out but i wanted more um and it it, it wasn't giving me that capability and it was just a little bit too buggy Okay, so when you say more, like, can you give me an example of something that didn't work? <laughs> um, let me see if I remember. Um, just like the the ease the ease of <laughs> using um, oh, using external instruments. Um, it it was just. Yeah. Yeah. It was just like my patches, how I wanted to run my sets. I wanted to load, be able to load different sets, different songs, like at the click of my finger, um, mm-hmm. pull up a song like that. Yeah. And it was it not that easy. Yeah. Okay. So I guess we've like bumped into this next thing, which your setup doesn't just rely on VSTs. Your setup does use hardware. And it- it seems like yes. actually that's pretty fundamental to what you do. Yes. Okay. So my setup um, includes um, usually I have my this is my MIDI controller here, which I mm-hmm. use with Gig Performer. That's that controls most of what I do in Gig, Gig Performer, and I also use my my Noise Stage Three and my synthesizer, my Roland Gaia. Okay. And I Great. also yes, that's what I use. How did you end up on those? Like, was it just kind of like you were researching and it found like those were the sounds you made or did you go through several series of hardware before you ended up with these? My external hardware? Yeah. Um, yeah, the, I, I like the, the Nord because of what I could do. I could do with it, how I can make my sounds. Um, mm-hmm. The, you know, the piano sounds are like incredible piano organ yeah. and Ruid sounds they're incredible and I could also insert any kind of sample. So I like the Nord for what that does on mm. its own. Um mm. when I want specific sounds, I know how to do that here. Um my Gaia this it's it's just a it's a synthesizer, so it, it really helps me creating really specific sounds like um lead sounds. Sometimes I'm I'm back in someone and they have a very specific sound in their um their song Mm -hmm. and i can't just you know search through keyboards or vscs to try find the sound i i usually just you know try to make the sound recreate the sound on my gotcha yeah gotcha um so you i'm assuming at this point you like know that synthesizer really well so you're pretty quick with it yeah 
Yeah. 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 <laughs> sure. Um, and then there was one other keyboard that you mentioned that's slipping my mind. Is that a MIDI controller or that? Yeah, also- yes, my MIDI controller. I use um, this is an Arturia. Um, okay. Oh yeah, Arturia. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, this is this is the brains of the operation. So this is like controls my whole gig performer setup. Um, we, I guess we talk about it more, but my setup, I be, I actually started on a different MIDI controller, but my setup mm-hmm. looks like, I try to recreate how my, my MIDI controller looks in yes. my gig performer setup. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yes. Yeah. We're definitely going to look at that. Um, which I actually think makes a ton of sense because then every interface matches, right? Right. Um, which is powerful. So, um, You've got your two hardware keyboards. The Arturia is what's controlling Gig Performer. Where is your audio going? So does your audio from like your Nord and from the Gaia run through Gig Performer or that just goes into an interface or a mixer? Or what, how, how's that? I, I, I run that straight. I run that straight um, out of the actual instrument into the whatever, whatever yeah. mixer. Yeah. And how is it connected? Are you using it for program changes as well right now? I am using it for program changes. So I each of my keyboards are connected through um, USB. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yes. Okay. So there's a lot happening here. Uh, <laughs> but let's back up a little bit. And then I do. I want to open up Gig Performer and kind of look at things. But how did you get started playing? Because like reggae and gospel are very different. Uh <laughs> And so, like, you know, there's probably a lot of people who can play one of those genres, but that cannot play the other. Right, so, right. So what was that progression? So, Go also play some jazz. Is that true? Yes, yes, yes. Which is also, I feel like if you know jazz really well and then you attempt to play gospel, you're just, you're forever almost correct. <laughs> I don't know if that resonates with you at all, but it's they're like feels like they're different chops. What, what was the like progression in your musical development that led so you to end mus- up everywhere? My musical development actually started in church. That's why I started. Okay, so um, I couldn't, I couldn't, I basically started with gospel music. Okay, um, so that's that's what that's what I listened to at first. That's what I. That's what I hear. That's why I, um, I grew up listening to. That's what, I, you know, that's where I started. Mm-hmm. I started in church and then it progressed from there. Um, gotcha. I started doing private lessons. I did a little classical um, reading. And how did I transition to reggae? Um, I am from the islands, man. Like that is that is in our <laughs> that is in our DNA, you know? Yeah. Um, I, yeah, I don't know. Um, yeah. So, so these are like the sounds that you were around is, is really what's going on. It's just like they were kind of coming into your ears and you, you know, you you made it happen because that's what you were exposed to. Um, when you're talking about gospel music, are you talking about like more traditional, like you're reading hymnals? Are you talking, uh, I don't even know what more modern gospel sounds or was it a good mix of both i i I do right now i do more modern sounds um Mm -hmm. but i do do some traditional music Mm -hmm. sometimes i i'm asked to play at a church and they will drop a hymnal on me and i have to okay okay, let's try to you know get through this you know (laughs) oh no man with the like reading for part or whatever and i'm like was this written for piano or was it written for organ was it written for voices who wrote this like that, right, that's right. where i always end up <laughs> Man, to be honest like when i'm doing that i tr- i i would look at a melody i would look at the 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 tonic or the bass note or whatever and i'll go from there like <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah it, and it depends too, I guess. Um, yeah, who like is listening, right? There, the, dude. There are some places where you go to play, and as long as it sounds vaguely correct, um, people are pretty happy. And then there are some places you go, and they hear every single note. 
<laughs> um, and then you're like, well, guess I better, <laughs> I got to read, got to focus. Um, okay. Should we talk gig performer? Do you want to share your screen and kind of explain what's happening? Yes, we can talk gig performer. Um, I'm going to share my screen right now. Okay. Yeah. So once you hit present, it should. Oh, there it is. I see it. Can you okay. see it? I do. Do you want to pull up Gig Performer and then I'll put it on the screen? Oh. Okay. I thought I was sharing that. Can you see it? Oh, that? right now I'm just seeing StreamYard. <laughs> so um, maybe, maybe I did that incorrectly. I think are you, you're working with one monitor right now. Yes. So if you share your whole screen and then just okay. pull gig performer to the front that will um yeah, let's do that okay can you see it now yes sir there we go all right so tell me what i'm looking at so this is basically the setup um to me the the hardest part was transitioning over to gig performer was figuring out what i wanted to see and how my setup would be um and then i just thought hmm, what if i just created my racks to look like my midi controller mm -hmm. oh mm -hmm. so as you can see here um i well, I started with a Novation Impulse. I don't know if I don't know if you guys. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Novation yeah. Impulse, and it basically had a similar layout to what you're seeing here. Um, yeah. It had eight faders, but I'm using four of them for my global, and okay. the other four up here. Um, it had nice. these these um, eight knobs and mm -hmm. the pads. And also, I, I nice. use the fast forward, play, stop, you know, that little section on the yep. keyboard also for my global. Gotcha. Gotcha. So, so, yeah. so does this layout kind of stay the same even when you're changing patches or has it kind of morphed over the iterations of sounds? It. For the most part, I try, I try to keep it the same. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. I would say I I change it sometimes. Like if I'm doing an organ, like oh sure, I'm, sure, sure. I'm, yeah, but I'm still <laughs> I'm still working through I'm still working through how I want that to be. But mm -hmm, for mm -hmm. the most part, it stays the same for um, the different sounds that I use. Yeah, and have you found it helpful, just like from a workflow perspective, and not be building panels every time you make a sound? Uh, abs absolutely. Y yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Sweet. Um, I kind of assumed that, but I'm like, you know, some people make very like specific panels for each thing. So I see. Okay, actually, here's a an important question. I'm realizing, um, with your um. Oh, I've completely lost my thought here. Well, it's gone now. That's interesting. We'll move on to the other one. Oh, you're using set list mode, it seems like, for, for a good amount of things, or at least there's yeah. a step here. Is this I, where I, you're sending all of your um, program changes from, from set list? Yes. Okay. So, for example, this set, uh, this is the last, I think this is the last reggae show that I did. Okay. This set... Um, Basically, I I had songs created. I had songs created from this artist already. So all I did was when I created my set list, I just you know, um, was Command Shift, find song name, type in the song name, added it to the set list, and just <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that listen, listen, this is so it's so fun. It's so easy for me. Um, yeah, and then it's okay. <laughs> just sorry for people who maybe don't know how awesome what you just did was. Let's give a little bit more context. So okay. you're you're getting ready for a show. 
and you've I'm already played with this artist it. before, yes? Let, let, let's make a, a new set list. Okay. I'm going to call this new set list. Yeah. Right. Um, okay. Add songs to my set list. You, you, you can go here um, and find song or find songs to add to your set list. But because yeah. I have songs I already created um, from all the other set lists that I have. Yep. So you can see all all the songs like from. Yep. This. So I'm gonna go back to my new set list, and what I do is. Shortcut is Command Shift F. I'll look for a song, um, or the, or type in the artist's name, and yep. you see what song. So I type "Love." This is all the songs with "Love" in it. Boom, add it to the set list. Um, <laughs> another song. Boom, add it to the set list. Boom, add it to the set list. Uh... And I I already have <laughs> my sounds here, as you can see, my sounds yep. down to the bottom here for each song. And we talked about um, changes. Mm -hmm. So yep. I know my setup, um, my external, I know my setup. So I have my Nord Stage 3 program change, and I have my, my Gaia mm -hmm. SH1 program changes already saved. So, yep. so you yeah, don't if have I to want do to change the sound, twice. I just say that again. So you don't have to do the work twice. Exactly. I make I make this song and it's there. Yeah. Okay. Let's talk about the Gaia for one moment. Uh -huh. uh, and I wonder I wonder often about this with synthesizers and I have an assumed answer, but you build a sound in the Gaia by moving knobs and faders. Right. And then you send a program change to the Gaia, which does not move your knobs and faders. Right. But it does change the sound. It does. It does change the sound. So I would. I would save. So I will build my sound. And I will save it. I will save it under one of my banks, one of my presets. Okay, and then you're able to access that sound at any point from Gig Performer by sending that program change in. Right. Okay. So when that happens, are you is Gig Performer nearby you when you're performing? So you're able to monitor from gig performer or does something happen on the hardware that lets you know it it's where it's supposed to be or do you just not think about it because it usually works or, or <laughs> <some> <laughs> i i i usually you know um i don't think about it anymore to be honest okay. um, <laughs> but well, that's good that means that it's doing what it's supposed it, it, to it, do it does what it's supposed to do um yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. so and I usually my tell is like if I change a song, I see like the the um the bank light changes, so gotcha. I know. Okay, gotcha. yes, it's moving. Okay, so there <laughs> so is some visual going. feedback on that instrument. Yes. <laughs> yeah, gotcha. But it's it's sort of like you know if you test it and you know that it works, then you can kind of rest in that. But I right. I guess I just wondered. And do you have your laptop near you when you're performing anyway, or or not not really? It's 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 near me, so I can I can um, access it. But I usually do not. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. I actually. Um, you, can you guys see my camera still? Um, say that again. Can you guys see my camera? Uh, yeah. Here, let me um make you bigger. Yep, I can see you. So I actually use this foot pedal. It's oh, a wireless. Nice. <laughs> It's a wireless foot pedal. Um, I just turn it on, and when I go to my next variation or my next song, I just click next, and that's what I that's what I use. Okay, sweet. Wow, very cool. Okay, so everything kind of it's set up kind of in two layers here. So you build all of your patches in in the panel view, and those are just sounds, right? Which ends up it seems like you actually reuse them i reuse my sounds um sometimes i have different variations for if i want something different or mm -hmm. in my set list um as you, i have my my knobs if yep. i want more delay if i want more reverb mm -hmm. if i have a filter on and i want it to do a certain thing i will adjust that and just create a snap take a snapshot so it it stays yes okay snapshots there's another feature 
Um, yes. What's a snapshot? So a snapshot is so you create a rack space in Gig Performer. A snapshot is basically for the set list view. Mm-hmm. Um, you may want something doing a set list. You may want something at a certain volume. You may want it at. You may want something different to happen to the sound. Um, whatever you have it uh, running through. So. In, in my opinion, a snapshot, it takes a picture of what you wanted of your um, your set list view, mm-hmm. and it saves it to whatever settings you have it. Right. Yeah. That's yeah. what I un- that's what that's what I understand a snapshot. Yeah, that, that that's how it works. So you know, in one sentence, a snapshot is a variation that goes just for that particular song part. So you can change your variation, save it to that song part. So when you come back, it's the same way, um, right. which I guess is really useful, especially if you need to make little tweaks. And um, right, exactly. Okay, cool. So th- this is this is all clear to me. Can we toggle over to the wiring view and check out what's going on in the yes. in the back? You can you can see my wiring view. Nice. Okay. So, so what's this happening? Is my wiring view. Yeah. Um. So I have it on horns right now um it, it doesn't look the same for everything i have it yeah. on horns right now um what i do with my horns is i mix it so i have a total of four plugins running at the same time for each of my um my rack spaces so okay. if i switch it to like a lead or something mm-hmm. so i saw this trick that either on backstage or on youtube or something where somebody yeah. says um to basically create a um, block, yeah. right? So I have four blocks here. Basically, create a block, and then turn turn the plugin off. Yeah. Because right. So yes. If, if I want to add in a different sound, I'll just go uh, quick replace. Type in whatever sound I want. Yes. Type in whatever sound I want and or oh, whatever plugin I want, and. It'll pull it in. Load it in. It's yeah. really nice. So I guess the the hidden gem here is it seems like when you're making a new sound, you start by duplicating an old rack space. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I love that. And I actually remember where this came up at some point. Um, just I don't remember who said it, but I remember talking about this <laughs> this at some right. point. This thing. Right. Yeah, the Chameleon plugin is great, and for those who haven't encountered it, if you end up using a, a Rackspace or a gig file from a friend um, and you don't have the plugin, um, it will actually send you to the website of the the plugin maker, so right. you can go buy the plugin if you want it, which can be nice. Um, okay, cool. So what are these MIDI in blocks here? It looks to me like these are all coming in from your key lab. Is that true? Yeah, it's all coming in from my key lab. Okay. Um, it's running to the plugin. Yep. Then I run the plugin through um a gain and balance yep. um block, and then I actually run that block <laughs> through a mixer. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I I can't remember why I did it like this. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and then from the mixer, I run into a reverb, run into a delay, a filter. Yep. And then I send it to my global rock space. Okay. So I actually do something similar with the, like, two levels of mixers. Um, And I think the reason that I ended up doing that is because I wanted to be able to have something that was dedicated before it ran through something that made it easy to see. So it just, I think, brought clarity for me visually um, more than anything else. Okay. So, why do you run it to the global rack space? Because that is where all the magic happens. <laughs> Fantastic. All right, tell me what I'm seeing here. So, I run it to my my global rack space. So, whatever is coming from my rack space it will go through another mixer, which is connected to my global um, panel. Yes. Okay. And then I actually run that through a um a compressor okay to kind of keep my my 
my mm. sounds at a, a, a certain balance and this is where I do all the magic basically for the interface. Okay. So if, great. if I'm running my keyboard one through outputs one and two for my interface, I would route, I'll do all my routing here. Okay. Um, I also, I also, I forgot about this. I also use a key, a keypad in my global rack space. Um, I do some sample sounds sometime. And okay. And this is where I, I have that. Okay, so the samples live globally because I'm assuming you don't use enough I, samples to make right, it. I, I don't. I have a sample pad. I use um, battery sample to basically yeah. run that, and I don't change the sound, so it just yes, just works. It just yes, <laughs> it just works. Okay, cool. Um, what are you using for your key your keypad? Is that just on the the key lab, or are you using a like battery uh, external or? product it's a innovation yeah pad launch pad like, yeah it's a launch pad yes yeah um i love everything novation makes <laughs> <laughs> um anyway so you're using the launch pad is that the pro that's got like the different colors in it and yes so yeah, yeah. what i remember that's how i remember um what sounds i, I remember by like the colors so i, I have a setup with colors and whatnot and i remember what sound i put so on the pad so okay awesome yeah. awesome cool so this is fantastic and then from here it gets routed to your interface which what, what interface are you running i i'm i usually run a apollo twin okay i also have a motu that i use sometimes sometimes I ha it has more outputs but um, for right now, I've been sticking with my um, UAD Apollo Twin. Okay, awesome. And I'm assuming some of these channels are virtual. Is that true? Yes. So outside of Backstage, are you using your virtual channels? Like, how does that work? Outside of back, not not all the time. Uh, <laughs> not sure. for live. I I do not do that for. Um, performances but mm -hmm. if i need those virtual ch channels for if i'm doing some some arrangement um or studio wise like yeah yeah i'll i'll use that gotcha gotcha all right cool well so here's what i'm wondering is like i and i don't know if this is possible but can you like demo what happens when you move between sounds like is that something you can show us like when you move from sound one to sound two, how the presets change. Uh, I don't even know if we can hear your synths or not, but let's let's, let's, let's check and see. Can you hear that? I can't hear that, but that's that's all right for now. So okay. Um, I, but I'm curious. Can I hear your Nord? Like when you play that, do I hear it? Because I did earlier. Yes, you can probably. Yeah, I can kind of hear that. Is that because it's coming out somewhere in your room, like? Um, probably, I don't, <laughs> yeah, probably, okay. I'm not sure. Okay. Um, cause I'm like, I can hear, um, I can hear your Nord pretty well. Um, so I don't know if there's something funny happening there, but that's okay. So, um, when you move between these things, you just get a whole different set of sounds, which I guess it'll just be a little bit hard to demo with, with the sound not coming through, but that's, that's totally fine. Um, right. Okay, cool. And are you using like the? Oh, you are. So we can even see when that's happening there. When you right. hop down between one and two, um, you're changing those volume levels, and those are different in instruments. I'm assuming between your first song and your second song. Right. Okay. Um, do you have a system for which instruments go on which channels and why, or it just depends on what you're doing? So my my overall my overall idea is basically I drew on a set list. Sometimes I want to create less variations. So if my three keyboards can handle all the sound all the sounds the song needs, mm -hmm. I try to just stick to that one variation. Gotcha. But if I need something different, I would um i would then create a different variation but i do have a system i tr i try to just keep lead sounds on my gaia mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Um, and then my MIDI controller and my my Nord, those switch between like you know the rules, the strings, um, sometimes the horns, just depending on what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, do you have an example of a tune where you're having to use more than one variation? I sh should, if I could find one. Let's see. I know you made a new set list, so I don't know how easy that is to find. I'm just curious kind of how that all go goes. Let me go back to an old set list. Um, yeah. Okay, so for example, this um, this has two variations, and I name one strings, I name one hits because and i know from my in my mind i know that the sound changes on my midi controller gotcha so um this intro i am playing like some pads on my noise i'm mm -hmm. playing a, a lead sound at the top mm -hmm. and then i have some string stuff going on here gotcha. and then in a certain in a certain point in the song we have some hits on stuff that we do so i'll just go over and go to my hits Gotcha. And do you toggle back to strings then? Do you need them again Sometimes, later? If I, if I need to. But okay. usually, usually, I don't usually toggle back. Yeah. 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 Um, I've had a couple of examples where I have had to go back and forth between variations because just putting them in order felt more confusing than just going back and forth. Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sweet, sweet. Okay, so if you're watching right now and you have any questions for Sam about his setup or how he's building anything, um, go ahead and make sure you can let us know in the comments. Um, it actually looks like uh, one of your friends, Sam, is watching um, Sherwin, Sherwin Williams, who has now, uh, you put him on Gig Performer. Ah, yes. That is yes. my brother from another mother. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, is he also playing keys? He plays... So he's one of those guys that play everything. Um, sure, sure, sure. He's a, he's yep. a saxophonist, actually. Oh. But he plays... He plays everything, basically. Okay, cool. Uh, we actually, I think we did a backstage episode with somebody who's a saxophone player as well, who... Um, who uses Gig Performer, actually, while he's playing saxophone, which is pretty wild. Um, I love it. Cool. Okay, so what else are we missing, Sam? I'm trying to think about what, we've, what we haven't what we have hit yet. Um, I know you're playing with uh, your reggae band. You've got some hits. Um, but I can't remember if there's something that we, we haven't quite covered yet that we were intending to about the way all of this works. Um. For the most part, I mm -hmm. my the my reggae band mm -hmm. Dub Lab shout out to Dub Lab yeah um, yes. is is what I use gig performer mainly for. Um, mm -hmm. Some of my other gigs, I don't I don't need the the complexity of gig performer, yeah. so mm -hmm. I just I run. My regular setup, um, or just I'll take a keyboard or two keyboards and yeah, one or two sounds that I'm using, I do that. Yeah. Um, we actually have a question here from uh, Manfred Reg. Are you using splits as well, or are you distributing your sounds on the different keys? I'm assuming he means keyboards. Uh, uh, right. So, um, I do do splits sometimes, depending. Um, I was split sometimes. I would split my my Nord, okay, or I would split my MIDI controller. Depend depends on what I'm doing. Yeah, mm -hmm. if I need a sound here and a sound here that's on my computer, I'll do that um, with mm -hmm. the patch. I'll just make the patch and save the patch. Yep, same thing gotcha. Nord. And on the Nord. Uh, maybe you just said this, but tra translating Nord language is I've never used it. When you're making those splits, are you doing it inside the Nord and changing what you're sending into Gig Performer, or are you splitting using MIDI in blocks? So I'm doing it inside the Nord for my gotcha. Nord. 
Gotcha. And I will just save it as a patch by itself. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Yep. That, that makes a ton of sense. Um, okay. Let's talk briefly about go to VST sounds. Uh, horn, horn patches and organ patches are, I'm assuming, pretty important in reggae. Yes. So what are you using and why? Um... <laughs> so <laughs> for my my horn patches, um, my, go- my go-to plugin is usually the Triton. Okay. Um, I know, I know. I don't know if you guys know about this VSC, mm-hmm. um, the Triton Extreme or the Triton. Um, I'm trying to remember. It's a it's a Korg plugin, and okay. this is my go-to. There you go. So for my horns, I usually mix the sounds because I know what sound I'm going for. Gotcha. Um, and for when you're organs. Playing- uh, sorry, before you hit organs, uh-huh. when you're playing horns, are you trying to make them sound like actual horns, or are they supposed to sound like synth horns? Actual horns. Okay, cool. So, like, this is sometimes a mix. So one one would be like um, a a trombone group sound, or and or a sax group sound, and trumpet group sound and some one would be like a mixture so if if i'm listening to a song and i'm trying to in, imitate the sound i know like what's up like if i want more trombone in the horn I section see. or if i want more sax or more trumpet stuff like that's how i, I would do so you're if i'm thinking about this correctly you're using the vst themselves as sections of horns Correct. And so you're controlling the volume of each section. Correct. That's actually, I've never seen anybody do that before, but that makes an unbelievable amount of sense to me. Are you, when you're doing that, are you using transpose features to like spread your voicings out, or are you just voicing them in a way that makes sense? Because once you start playing with horns, you're dealing with voicings that aren't necessarily pianistic. Um. It, it 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 really depends. So, but if that happens, I would do that from the the plugin itself perspective. I would okay. just if I need this an octave up, I would do it in the plugin itself. Gotcha. Or octave down, right? Gotcha. Yep, it makes makes a lot of sense. And there's like a couple of ways you could do that. Like in Gig Performer, you can do it from the plugin itself, which will save it in the plugin, or you can do it from the MIDI in block which will save it in the MIDI in block. So it, it depends on kind of what level of granularity you need. Um, right. So, uh, for example, if you want to have a plugin play in two octaves, you could use two MIDI blocks going to the same plugin. Right. Um, but if you're, anyway, in your context, what you're doing makes a ton of sense. So, okay. Wild. So you're just i'm assuming voicing your chords then in a way that kind of gets the job done and you're not worrying right. about drop two and drop two four and all of that crazy Correct. stuff is that Correct. done in reggae or are the chord voicings generally closer together in a horn section like how how large are the horn sections we're trying to emulate right now so and what reggae it sometimes is not usually a huge um disparity in like in like octaves and stuff like that it's yeah it's usually one trombone one saxophone one trumpet or two trumpets like it's okay. not <laughs> right it's not like a whole bunch of yeah right gotcha gotcha so it makes what you're trying to emulate at least a slightly closer together correct yeah okay cool so this is for horns your go-to is the triton bsts um let's go into your uh your organ sounds I, so i'm assuming organ, the nord has a pretty good organ sound correct down. i was just gonna say that so <laughs> usually my go-to is i will go straight to my nord i have i have my job my physical drawbars and everything so that's like handy for me right there yeah yeah yeah, yeah. um I do, I do have an organ passion here um it's 
The um, I'm trying to remember the Arturia, company. the the B three V. Yes, oh, yeah. the B three. But it's I, I don't like it as much as mm-hmm. the. Normal. Yep, and when you're using software like this, it gives you the ability to combine things so easily that you can really have your preferences without a ton of extra work, which is very handy. Okay. Um. Well, that's great. Uh, what else is super common for you? Are you using like VST road sounds? Are you using um, like clavinet? I feel like it's used often in reggae. Like, what are what are your other go-to sounds? So, my clavs, keyscape. keyscape. <laughs> okay, yeah, not, not surprised. Roads, keyscape. Okay. Um, I have some. And do you pads. prefer your keyscape? Your your keyscape. Uh, road sound to Nord road sound, or is it more of a configuration decision? It's more of a configuration decision. Um, yeah, I'm still I'm still bat- battling that because sometimes I'll use my for clavs definitely keyscape, mm-hmm, but for mm-hmm. roads my my the Nord has a very yeah it's it convincing yeah <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure really good sure. Right now. Okay. Um, yeah, that's, that's what I assumed. And what about for like uh, processing? Are you using like Apple's reverbs and Apple's delays and stuff? Or do you have any go-to audio effects? I think I am using all Apple stuff right now. Okay. I feel like this is beautiful. So just to like kind of make the point with, you know, people who are just getting started and you're like hearing people say things like Keyscape or Omnisphere, and you start sweating, you, like, feel your wallet, you know, shrink oh, immediately, and the I, panic I, I have, I have stuff. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. But inside of every single Mac, these audio units exist, and they work. Yes. Like, they, they're completely workable. I mean, I guess these are AUs, they're not VSTs, but they're completely workable, yeah, and they get the job done. So... Yeah. They're there, friend, if we need to use them. Um, and they do. They work. And this is this is your rig, right? This isn't the backstage with gig performer rig. This is just the rig rig. Right. Yeah, and it, and it gets it done. Um, okay, so talk to me about Omnisphere. Where are you using that? It, it just depends. So I have a pad here that I use, and the sound I got from Omnisphere. Okay. Um, strings. As you can see, I'm running two Omnisphere, two um, two different blocks of Omnisphere. Yep. Um, one is more, I think, one is more legato, and the other one is more like attacky. So my strings sound. I mix it so it sounds. It's not too laggy, and I could hear the attack of the note. Yeah, interesting. The attack of the note for strings, we come back to this time and time again. So you, the way you work that out is by layering it so we get the yes. attack from one and everything else from the other. Yes. Um, and we're at 7%? Or we're, we were at 7% on that. Uh, we were at 7%. <laughs> um, oh, sorry, I switched. I switched. No, uh, no, no, it's okay. Well, you know. Yes, yeah, so with the two Atmosphere plugins, we're at 7%. Mm-hmm. That's is... it's pretty good. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty good. You know, and even when you're, I mean, your larger patch was the four horns. I think you were up in the twenty some yeah. odd range. Um, I mean, that's still great. Um, also, the rate at which that adjusts when you're switching patches is fantastic. Yeah. Um, Abraham wants to know if you tried the IK Multimedia B3 organ. No, I've, I've, yeah, you got the, you, the Nord, so it's working for you. That's working for me, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, Dave Bolden, it sounds like he's recommending some layering. Dave, you want to let us know if that's what you're suggesting? Um, okay, cool. Um, all right, so friends, we're, we're about to kind of come to the end of our time. But I didn't want to cut other questions off. So if you're curious about uh, how Samuel is doing something particular or curious about his work, um, pop those questions in. So um, Samuel, I know we have links in the description right now to your different projects. 
but can you tell us what's coming up? And then um, I have I, I have a final question for you before we go. But first, if if you happen to be in St. Thomas or around there, and people want to see you play, how do they find out about that? What's you know best way to keep in touch? I I do have a website, um, or you can follow me on Instagram, or add me on Facebook. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But I'm. I haven't been doing a good job with updating my website. <laughs> but, but it seems like your Facebook and your Instagram is pretty a- active. Right. So that would I be use- probably the best place to get the most up-to-date, quickest information. Yes. I usually share stuff on my Instagram. Um, yeah. Okay, great. So make sure that you're checking out the website, checking out Facebook, checking out Instagram, depending on your platform of choice. Um, so for gig performer users who are just getting started, brand new to it, what do you recommend or what's like one bit of wisdom you would share with somebody who's never used the platform before, who's just getting started to kind of put them off on the right foot? Um, so I would say two things. Okay. Know exactly what you want to do. I like have an idea of what you want to do or what you want your your gig performance to, to look like or what you want it to operate like because you're building this. This is not like something yes. pre, pre, pre you're building it how you want it to be. Uh, mm-hmm. And I would say look at some of Brett's video. Look at come log into backstage. Like this is where I learned a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Backstage yeah. and videos on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Um, thanks for sharing that. Uh, Definitely going into it with some desire, I think, is key. Um, yeah, there's a ton of resources. Um, also good to add that um, the community forum is also insanely good. <laughs> so above average, so fast, so thorough. Um, and actually, one thing's coming in here that is worth mentioning. Um, and uh, somebody asked if, if you can do seamless patch changing in gig performer four of course you can primary feature fundamental um it's actually so important to gig performer that a tremendous amount of effort has been spent to make sure that you can move between patches mid bar without a hiccup or glitch so um actually uh, sam do you switch like mid song like can you attest to the seamlessness oh, of yeah. switching I, 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 as you can see i have different variations sometimes so yeah. i have to switch mid song yes or some the songs we don't really sometimes we don't stop and then go into a next song it's everything is yeah it keeps going so like when you're so, ready to go you hold that pedal hit that next yes and you keep going <laughs> next song <laughs> yeah yeah it's it's fundamental and it's built in and it's seamless and it always works. So um, certainly rest assured. And yeah, I think that's super common, right? Like you show up and um, you know, you, there's no, no space between songs. You have to just keep going. Yes. Um, have you, have you ever showed up to a gig and the set list changes while you're on stage? I, I don't oh. know if this is just. A oh, yeah. Or... oh yeah. Oh yeah. We, we've done <laughs> shows where we don't know what's next. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We don't know what's next. Somebody yeah. would call a song in the top back, and I just that's why I like my fine song feature. I will just right. command shift, mm-hmm. keep going. Yeah, yeah. And I think, you know, the fundamental like gig performer just being, you know, built on um, like real experience of actual players means that certain things like the fine song feature, um, like it. It's it's there because it makes sense. Because how many times does somebody on the talkback say we're over here now? Um, I played a gig a few weeks ago where we rehearsed a set of six songs, and then got on stage and played six different songs. <laughs> six different songs. Um, anyway, okay. We actually do have one question coming in before we uh, wrap up, which I think you kind of th- this is like fundamental. You kind of touched on this with your chameleon plugins, but really, you just write mouse click and replace, right? Course, do you want yes. to demo that quick? Um, yes, let me do that. Okay. So uh, let's go to a patch. 
I have this organ. I want to replace it. Quick replace. Pull up whatever I want to pull up. Uh, let's say Triton. Uh, Triton. Boom. Is it, is it's that easy. <laughs> sweet, sweet. Well, Sam, thank you so much for being here. Um, we are super grateful for you um, and for your support and for your playing. Um, people who are watching right now, uh, check out what Sam's doing. This guy's like a real accomplished musician making amazing music. Um, and this is the real deal. This is the life of, of musicians. So, um, Samuel, thanks for being here. Thank you. Um, yep. One thing I want to say before I go is Please. this um, one thing I really like about gig performance is very, it's, it's a sturdy, it's a well-built um, application. It hasn't failed me once yet. It's awesome. <laughs> I'm just saying. That's awesome. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's the job. I, I'm happy to hear that's been your experience because that is the number one job is that it never fails ever. Yeah. <laughs> That's the job. Yes. <laughs> There's nothing more important when you're playing live than that your instrument works. Yeah, exactly. Um, and there's, you know, no guitar player who goes on stage and finds out that, you know, the A string has just decided to not work. So yeah. anything virtual that you're using has to, unless it breaks, but anything virtual has to be as solid as, as that. So um, next week, 1130, we've got Jens Squirblies. Coming on, uh, also a keyboard player, fantastic musician. Um, Samuel, thanks for being with us. We'll see you all next week.